This is Detective Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a drama film called Stealing Beauty. Spoilers ahead! Watch out and take care. A young and beautiful woman named Lucy is traveling. Unbeknownst to her, someone is taking a video of her on a digital camera. Throughout her journey, the creep continues to videotape her without her knowledge. Then, during her last stop at the train, she falls asleep. Her stalker films a close-up of her face as she drools before focusing the camera on her crotch. But soon, the man wakes her up since it's already her stop. Lucy hurriedly makes her way outside, and when she's putting her boots on, she notices the man's camera for the first time. When she asks him what he's doing, the man simply says that he was the one on the airplane with her. He takes out the videotape from his camera, and just as the train is about to take him away, he drops the videotape for Lucy. Lucy soon arrives at a rural retreat house. There are clay statues of the human form everywhere in the area. She sees a sleeping woman in the house, then continues on to the back garden. A man is also sleeping there, and it seems that it's nap time for everyone. Then, Lucy notices Diana, sleeping on the seat near her. She wakes the woman up, and as Diana rouses, she's delightfully surprised to see Lucy. Diana calls out for her husband, Ian, and he comes down the stairs to meet Lucy. As it turns out, Diana and Ian are old friends of Lucy's deceased mother, and they both welcome her warmly. The next day, Lucy meets the different people in the retreat. Ian is an intense man, and he's the painter who would be making her portrait. Then there's Guillaume, an energetic old man who meets Lucy by losing his sandal off the balcony in her direction. Lucy also meets Miranda Fox, a jeweler, and her boyfriend, Richard Reed. Richard is the only non-creative type in the retreat, and he works as an entertainment lawyer. Boisterous and lacking in tact, he immediately mentions Lucy's late mother, Sarah Harmon, who was a renowned poet. It is also revealed that Miranda is Diana's daughter from a previous marriage. During dinner, Lucy meets Noemi, an Italian columnist who has a column of her own called Tell Noemi. Miranda speaks with her brother, Christopher, who is off with a man named Niccolo Donati. It turns out that Niccolo was the first person that Lucy had ever kissed. It was there at the retreat four years ago, and Lucy feels a pang of jealousy whenever the topic of Niccolo being with Christopher comes up. Out of everyone there, only Diana notices her distress. Night comes, and Lucy's jealousy takes a tight hold of her. The full realization that Niccolo is now with someone else crashes down on her. Suddenly, she hears a knock coming from her door, and Alex Parrish approaches her. Alex is a famous English writer who's dying of an illness. The two go out in the night, and they start talking to each other while smoking grass. Since Alex had known Lucy's mother, she tells her stories about her. Here, Alex finds out that Lucy has never slept with anyone yet. He's intrigued by how such a beautiful young woman like her has yet to try her hand at making love. Naturally, Lucy grows uncomfortable with the conversation, so she leaves, and they end the night on good terms. The next day at breakfast, the group gathers at the table. Diana is pleased that Alex made an appearance, and she notes how inspired he seems to be. Until now, Alex remains intrigued by Lucy, and he feels the desire to guide her. During breakfast, the vacationers all make recommendations about who to pair Lucy with on that holiday. Suddenly, Ian and Diana's young daughter, Daisy, shows up. Since the two have known each other from before, Daisy goes with Lucy and takes her to the nearby lake. Lucy tells her that she's kissed someone there once, and in turn, Daisy claims that Miranda's kissed many men already, including Niccolo. For whatever reason, Lucy is completely hung up on Niccolo, and it's implied that she hasn't slept with anyone yet because she wants him to be her first time. One night, Lucy approaches Diana, asking about a man named Carlo Liska. Lucy only knows of the man through the letters that her mother received from him. At her inquiry, Diana explains that Carlo had seen too much war, and it made him strange. Their conversation is interrupted when Ian arrives, ready to sketch Lucy's portrait. They retreat to Ian's studio, where Ian makes several sketches while Lucy poses. 
As they do, Ian talks to the very curious Lucy about her mother, Sarah. She mentions that she's different from Sarah, in that Lucy actually has joy in her eyes. The comment makes her smile. Afterwards, Lucy walks back to her room, and on her way there, she encounters Richard and Miranda making sweet, loud love. She hides from view as the couple goes on to make their moaning sounds. The next day, Carlo Liska comes into the vacation house to meet everyone. After having been invited by Diana to meet Lucy, at the moment, Lucy is playing a game with Daisy and Richard. The man ends up being too playful and flirtatious, much to Miranda's jealousy. When Richard pins Lucy down, Lucy ends the game and pushes him away. There, she notices Carlo glaring at her. Intrigued by him, she acquaints herself with the man. Lucy asks questions about her mother and if they were lovers, and Carlo confirms that they were just friends. Alex makes an appearance, prompting Carlo to run off as if he were scared of him. With Carlo gone, Alex sternly warns Lucy about the man, but Lucy insists that she likes him. Though she's discreet about it, Part of the reason why Lucy's here is to search for her real father, and in her mind, Carlo is now one of her prospects. Alex and Lucy go to the pool, where the vacationers are swimming in the nude. Just then, Lucy and Alex overhear Diana talking about Lucy's virginity. Realizing that Alex told Diana about her secret, Lucy angrily storms off. In her room, Lucy is phoning for a plane ticket back to New York when suddenly, Christopher and Niccolo make an appearance. Niccolo is also accompanied by his brother, Osvaldo. Initially, Niccolo doesn't recognize Lucy right away, but as soon as he does, they passionately lock eyes with each other. As for Alex, he sits outside Lucy's room as he stews in his guilt. When Diana comes by to tell Alex it's dinner time, she peeks inside Lucy's room, then chuckles. She says that Lucy isn't paying him any mind at the moment, and Alex peeks as well, to see Lucy singing and dancing wildly while listening to music. Diana takes Alex away for dinner while Lucy happily dances, knowing now that Niccolo's there. One evening during dinner, the vacation house is separated into two conversations. The first table holds the older folks and they discuss politics. The other has the younger people and they're talking about how they lost their virginities. Lucy feels uncomfortable being there as she's worried that they'll all interrogate her about hers. When the question turns to Osvaldo, he dismisses it, saying that he doesn't know which is more ridiculous, the adults' political conversations or theirs. Lucy sits next to Niccolo the entire time, but because she's had too much to drink, she accidentally throws up on him. He just plays it nice and looks after Lucy anyway. Osvaldo stands to appreciate the view behind him instead of participating in the conversation that bores him. He even seems annoyed seeing Lucy and his brother together. The following day, Lucy writes a love note to Niccolo, only to throw it away outside the window. Unfortunately, Richard is there, and he picks up the note, thinking that it's for him. This prompts the man to enter Lucy's room and flirt with her. The two of them are soon interrupted by Miranda, who catches them in a very questionable and easily misconstrued position. Miranda storms off and becomes angry with Richard, while Lucy laughs it off. Lucy then goes to Niccolo's house, but her heart breaks upon seeing him kiss another woman. She gets on her bike and rides back to the vacation home. As she passes by Osvaldo, she crashes on her back and scrapes her knee. Still, she refuses any help and goes on her way. Back in the villa, Lucy encounters a lieutenant whose car broke down. She directs him to the vacation house so that he can use a phone. The women are quick to invite him in the house and they just let him stay there a while while he waits for his ride, which will arrive the next morning. Returning back to her room, Lucy catches Alex there waiting for her. He asks her for forgiveness, and she accepts his apology. Alex sees her scraped knee, so he tends to her wound. Later, the whole group, excluding Alex, goes to the pizzeria for dinner. Niccolo and Osvaldo follow suit with a woman under Niccolo's arm. The three of them go to a different table, and Lucy eyes them with jealousy. Suddenly, Guillaume starts to have an episode, and he blurts out words as if he were in a different place entirely. Diana explains that Guillaume is a legendary art gallery owner, and in his old age, his mind grew weary. Now, he's occasionally stuck in these episodes, much to everyone's surprise, 
the lieutenant knows exactly how to handle him, and he assists with getting Guillaume home. The next day, Lucy poses for another one of Ian's sketches. She even ends up exposing one of her breasts. Niccolo and Osvaldo drive in, and Niccolo ogles at Lucy, while Osvaldo is turned off by her immodesty. After the sketching session, Lucy heads down to the olive grove with Niccolo, following after her. But when Niccolo tries to do it with her, Lucy pushes him away with a nagging feeling that this isn't right gnawing at her. She goes straight to her room, crying after realizing that the boy that she had idealized all this time is just another mook. Lucy emerges from her room and goes to Alex, who comforts her. She reveals that the notebook she has with her is her mother's and contains her poems. One of the poems depicts her in an olive grove, which is likely the same grove that Lucy had just been in. The poem tells of how she was in an olive garden with a man who got pregnant with Lucy. With how descriptive the poem is, she knows that the clues to identify her real father are hidden in the stanzas. As for one, the man ate olive leaves, saw Sarah wearing green sandals, and is known to have killed a viper. Finally, Lucy asks Alex if he were the real father by any chance, but Alex says that it isn't him. Throughout her stay, she had been subtly asking the other men in the villa these questions. Earlier, she had asked Carlo if he had ever killed a viper, and she asked Ian if he had ate olive leaves. During the conversation with Alex, she asks him about love, and he comforts her, saying that she will one day find hers. The Donati family holds their annual party, and almost everyone in town is invited. Diana comes with Lucy, Guillaume, Richard, and Miranda. At the party, Lucy dances with Carlo and further questions him about the past to figure out if he's her father. But she comes to the conclusion that he isn't. When the party's over, as Valdo approaches Lucy, he tells her that he's going to America and he wants to ask Lucy about it. The two plan to have this talk the next morning. Afterwards, Lucy is taking home an Englishman she met at the party. Lucy goes around the villa, all but parading the man she's with to perhaps stop everyone from talking about her virginity. Before she comes inside her room, she visits Alex to say hello. It's clear that Lucy somehow wants him to stop her, but Alex can't bring himself to do it. Later, it's revealed that Lucy didn't sleep with the Englishman and that they had slept in separate beds. The next morning, Lucy sees the Englishman off. She thanks him for being gentlemanly with her, and with that, he goes on his way. Just then, a car drives up. It's Alex's doctor. Alex is to be rushed to the hospital, and the rest of the vacationers accompany him to the ambulance. Lucy parts with a roll of grass as a gift. Alex thanks Lucy for bringing him joy, and they bid their farewells. One day, a realization dawns on Lucy. She goes to Ian's workshop to inquire more about what he did during August 1975. Ian remembers having done Sarah's portrait, and from there, an unspoken understanding is made between them. Ian is Lucy's real father. The two embrace, basking in the joy of having found each other. Later, as Valdo finds Lucy being attacked by bees, he comes to rescue her and then tends to her bee stings with clay. This sparks an immediate connection between them. Osvaldo tells Lucy that he had a crush on her back then, and one time he wrote an unsigned letter to her, talking about how much he liked her and how he thought of her when he was in the woods. This has Lucy surprised. It's a favorite letter of hers, and all this time, she thought it was from Niccolo. Lucy and Osvaldo find themselves under a tree where they lovingly lounge around. Back at the villa, Diana tells Ian she's grown weary from her life there. She doesn't want to die in this place. She wants to die where she belongs. Diana is tired of taking care of people. She says that she wants to go back to where it's gray and damp. Ian tells her that she's upset about Alex, and moving isn't going to change that. Just then, the members of the villa assemble in the middle of the table for dinner. Suddenly, Daisy asks, where's Lucy? Lucy and Osvaldo are still under the tree. Now, there's a bonfire in the distance, and the two of them are making love. Lucy is relieved and overjoyed that her first time is with the kind and gentle Osvaldo. The next morning, the two of them walk back to the villa with plans of Osvaldo coming with Lucy to America.
Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.